All right. Hi, everyone. I'm delighted to introduce one of our Global Technical Solution Award winners, Chelsea Lee. As a Microsoft technical trainer, Chelsea has taught courses on data, AI, security, and Azure fundamentals to students around the world. Today, she'll give us a glimpse into possibilities that might have seemed like science fiction only yesterday and how Azure makes them happen. Take it away, Chelsea. Thank you so much, Sherry. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are joining us from within the world and welcome to today's session on Ignite. And I have a special shout out to all of my future thinkers and also my future AI developers and data scientists. My hope is by the end of this session that we will have piqued a new interest, whether it's an AI data or even something potentially else. My name is Chelsea Lee and I'm one of the Microsoft technical trainers here and I love AI and data. And I love it for just what the possibilities that can come from it. There is so much that we can do with data and AI. And what you may not realize is that it's already around us. We used to think of AI as being something in the future, but I have news for you. The future is now. So I th thought first what we should do is start with what is data and what is AI? You know, this is an introductory level session and want to make sure we know what some of this terminology is before we get into the meat and potatoes. First of all, data, what is it? We hear about it all the time. We hear about organizations wanting to collect it, analyze it and manipulate it. Well, you know, I've even heard before that data is the new oil. There's actually something interesting about data. On any given day, it's estimated that we generate 18 quintillion bytes of data. And if you don't know how big a quintillion is, that's 18 zeros. And with data, all it is is a collection of facts. That could be numbers or descriptions. It can be observations. But notice here I didn't say it's information. Data itself is not information when you collect it. You have to manipulate it and change it to extract information from data. Now, data can come from anywhere in the world. Likely, you have some type of smartphone sitting next to you right now. That smartphone, it's collecting data. Maybe it's your GPS location. Maybe it's your search history. Maybe it's your coupons that you're saving at your favorite store. That can all be data. You can collect data from the weather, from the finances, uh, from books, from, I mean, the possibilities are endless with data, but it's what you do with the data where the power really comes in. Now, there are many different routes that you can take, but I want to really talk specifically about moving that data that we collect and then manipulating it to create artificial intelligence solutions. And what's artificial intelligence? Well, at its core, it's emulating some type of human capability. But how do humans learn? Well, let's think back to our childhood. How, how did you learn to tie your shoes? Maybe a parent or a caregiver was the one who showed you how to tie your shoes. Well, did you know the way that they showed you how to tie your shoes actually shaped the way that you make a decision today? Why do you put your left shoe on before your right shoe or vice versa? Is this something you consciously think about? No, we actually make around 80,000 decisions any given day without even thinking about it. And we do that because as humans, we've had a number of different experiences that have shaped us and helps us make those decisions just, you know, subconsciously without even thinking about it. And a lot of it stems from childhood. So those past experiences allow us to tell when something's not quite right. You know, we get that gut feeling of, ooh, you know, this doesn't seem right or something seems out of the ordinary. Well, that's because we've had experiences in the past that tell us what our normal is. And so we can sense when something's not right. Same thing where we can recognize what a cat is, a dog is, a cow, a chicken. Because when we were children, we were taught, this is what a cow looks like, this is what a cat looks like. Here's the noises that they make. And so we can interpret visuals. We can engage in conversations. We can read 
based off of those experiences that we've had as humans. Now, when it comes to training software, computers, we're not necessarily taking them out and teaching them how to read or pointing out a chicken like we would a child, but we use data to provide those experiences for our artificial intelligence solutions. So instead of you know, tying a shoe, what you would with a child, you would then take that data that you've collected from all these different sources and then use it to train what we call a artificial intelligence model. And I wanna show you kind of how data and these AI solutions can be played into anything. So little fact about me, I am a avid plant collector. Uh, in my house, we have about over a hundred different house plants, plus a full blown garden in both my front yard and backyard. I love plants. I also live in the desert. I live in Las Vegas and we are not necessarily known for our lush green environment. But as a plant collector, there is this one plant, this coveted rare plant called the variegated monstera. And I have that here on the screen. And if you're not familiar with the plant world, this plant, a single leaf from this plant can go for $100, $125. A full plant, depending on the maturity, can go anywhere from $700 to $5,000. Yes, and that's, that is for a plant. Well, this variegated monstera, this is something that I want to add to my collection. And let's say, for example, you know, I'm, I want to be a future AI user and creator. Maybe what I do is I come in and I say, I'm going to build an app. I'm going to build a mobile app that allows me to scan pictures of plants or scan plants out while I'm shopping. And it can tell me whether or not it's rare, what the price should be, and if there's any others in the area. So let's just walk through this scenario, what we would have to do to create this type of application. First, we're gonna need some type of data. Now, that data can come from anywhere. So maybe I'm going out and I'm talking to some of my local plant nurseries and I'm saying, can you show me what your inventory levels are? How much are you charging for plants? Maybe it's financial data I'm collecting from them. The suppliers, maybe I am tracking their weather patterns or what their pest infestation looks like or what their supply chain management looks like. That's data I could use to collect. Maybe I'm leveraging some type of online search. What are the common terms that other plant lovers are using? Maybe I'm going to the community gatherings. What are the plants that people are selling or what are they trying to trade? And then, you know, I can go to consumers directly. I can pull them. Data. This is just a snippet of where I can get data from. You can go so much deeper. Now you might be asking yourself, cool, we have the data. That's just the collection of the facts, the observations, the numbers, but what are we gonna do with it? Well, I can take that data and I can build out a model that can help me identify different plants. So let's say for example, I have all of these different plants that I have gone out and I have taken pictures of. And let's say I'm new to my plant journey and I don't necessarily know the names of the plants. So the very first thing that I want to do, my model to do for me, is I want it to help uh, name the plant. So at least I know what I'm working with. Well, what I'll do is I'm gonna go through and I'm going to collect data on all the different plants that I, I have or I have in my area. And I'm going to also make note of their specific features. And think about a feature of a plant. How tall is it? What type of soil is it growing in? What do the leaves look like? How many leaves? Does it have flowers? Think of features as part of the data that you would use to describe the plant. Well, then let's say I partnered with someone who is also a plant lover, but also a plant expert. And they were able to help me apply what we call labels or in this case, the names to the plants. And this is information that our machine learning model is going to use to actually recognize based off of the features of the plants and being able to say the name. So I have all the data of my features, what they look like, and then I also have the names. I'm gonna take all of that data and I'm going to run it through an algorithm. 
And this is where my data scientists come into play. This is where they're doing the hard work. And they're running different mathematical calculations, they're testing. And finally, once we have an established model, I could actually deploy this into my application. And let's say I leverage something like computer vision. When I'm out in the field, I can just snap a picture of a plant and my model can then tell me what the name of that plant is. And it's doing that based off of those features. That's really cool. Now, how do you do this inside of Azure? Well, inside of Azure, you have a couple different choices when it comes to building out your models. Uh, the first one is going to be Azure Machine Learning. And this is a workspace inside of Azure where if you're a data scientist, this is probably where you're going to do most of your work. This is where you can build out your own algorithms. You can test, you can train, you can deploy, you can manage all of your models themselves. But the one thing I want to point out with machine learning is that you do need to have a data science background. You do need to have some type of mathematical, statistical, understanding the difference between linear regression, probability theory, and so much more. And I have a secret for you. I'm not a data scientist. But does that mean that I can't build out an artificial intelligence solution? No, not at all. Because inside of Azure, we have something called the cognitive services. And I love the cognitive services because it takes a lot of what's really difficult about data science and it provides you with a pre-trained solution, a pre-trained model that as a developer, you can just take that pre-trained model and add it into your own application, your own software, your own service without having to make any sort of training efforts. And it's in a lot of cases, a really point and click uh, experience. So one of the cognitive services inside of Azure is something called custom vision. And custom vision varies slightly from computer vision, where computer vision inside of Azure, it's all the model, um, all different images and classes that Microsoft has trained. So you can have it easily recognize what a cat is, a dog, a book, a person, but you know, at this point, Microsoft hasn't necessarily gotten into the whole plant world and being able to tell what a rare plant is versus a non rare plant. And so custom vision is a another iteration of computer vision where I can actually upload my own images, apply my own tags and then train a model to recognize those images, those individual pixels in each image, take all of that data and then say with this level of confidence, I believe it's this tag based off what you trained me. Now what I have, I want to actually open this up for you. Uh, this is part of Azure. It's a separate uh, web portal. It's at customvision.ai where you log in with your Azure credentials and it's very simple to create a project. Once you're in with your credentials, all you need to do is to select the new project folder. And then you give a couple of details with the project. So let's say that I'm going to name this my pl uh, plant ID app. And I can enter a description. Help identify uh, variegated monsteras. It also helps. All right. So from the resources, custom vision is an Azure resource and this is the tool. This is think of this as the engine, the compute, the power, the predictive model running behind the scenes because we are using a cognitive service. I'm not having to do any of that training. So remember, I'm not a data scientist, but I do want to use AI inside of my application. So I already have a resource created. I'm going to do a, a project as a classification. I'm going to do a single tag per image, and I'm going to just keep this as a general. And what's going to happen is the project's going to create, and all I need to do now is add my images. And you'll see how quickly it is for me to train. So if I actually come over here and I have a bunch of pre-saved images of a regular Monstera, 
regular Monstera. This isn't that $700 to $5,000 plant. This one's like a $20 plant. So I want to make sure that my model can recognize when we are working with this type of plant. So I'm going to just say this is a Monstera. I'm going to upload 17 files. Uh, just so you know, when it comes to training a custom vision, you do need a minimum of five files. I'll select upload. And then I will then upload my variegated Monstera's images because the only difference between a Monstera, what makes it worth a little bit of money versus potentially thousands of dollars is the fact that the leaves have some white speckling to it. That is the only difference. So I am going to name this my variegated. Hey, I cannot spell today. We'll upload those images. And now all we have to do is train our model. Notice that I did not have to do any type of numbers. I didn't have to analyze any of the images down to the pixel level. Because remember, the way that AI works is it's training based off of the data in the image. You might be saying, Chelsea, what data is in that picture of a leaf you uploaded? Well, the way that computer vision works is it is actually looking at each individual little pixel in that image. And since it's colored, it's doing it on both of red, blue, and green, and the intensity of that pixel. And that is the data that our machine learning model is analyzing to recognize patterns and predict a likelihood of the picture either being a variegated Monstera or a regular Monstera. Now, what I've done is I've actually gone ahead and um, I've pre-trained another model. It takes about five minutes with this side, but what we'll do is let's actually test this out. It's the same batch of images, but let's actually test it. Now, I need an image URL and just so you know that I'm not using anything that I've trained with, I actually have from Bing, we will copy the image link just from this beautiful variegated Monstera. In case you were wondering, this is probably an easy $5,000 plant. But we'll come back in here and we'll paste that URL and we'll see how our machine learning model does. All right. So you can see based off the predictions over here in the bottom right hand corner that there is a 91.6% likelihood or probability that this is a variegated Monstera, which is in fact correct. Now you might be saying, well, Chelsea, can it be 100%? And let me ask you this, are humans 100% in what we do? Can we guarantee with 100% confidence that a person is always going to get the answer right? No. And the same thing works with artificial intelligence. We are emulating a human capability. So it's always going to be a percentage. Now this is very high at a 91%. I could probably get it higher with additional training as well. But with you know roughly 30 images, we were able to build a custom vision solution, which then if I wanted, all I would have to do is to come into my project settings and take this key and this endpoint and then build that into my application. So then my application can consume the Azure resources running this custom vision. And I did this all without being a data scientist and I have a fully trained model ready to go. But what else can you do with this? Well, artificial intelligence has several different workloads. Uh, we have computer vision, natural language processing, ling uh, language understanding, uh, anomaly detection, so much more. And so when I think about if I was building the perfect plant app for plant parents out there, well, maybe I want to be inclusive and build out an application that can provide text to speech uh, captions for the image that they're looking at. So instead of just taking a picture and saying whether or not it's variegated, it's also giving a caption of what they're actually looking at. Or, you know, I want to have this be an international app. So being able to translate uh, plant care instructions. If you want to get real fancy, and this actually exists, remember I told you the future is now, 
you can actually build out a smart home application, which maybe it's a smart plant pot that can let you know what the nutrient needs are, what watering levels are. Is it time to trim? Is it time to cut the leaves? And if you uh, even built it further, you could give it commands through language understanding and it would then take action based off of what you speak. Uh, some of the more common things that I see in these apps are anomaly detection. When your player gets a brown leaf, that's not normal. What can you do? And it can help you prioritize the care schedule. And because we are in the cloud, and that's the key thing when it comes to Azure, we are in the cloud. So you have limit, limitless scalability. Traditionally, when it came to running artificial intelligence solutions, you had to have an insanely large computer. You had to have massive amounts of storage to train petabytes of data. Remember, we're talking about quintillion bytes of data generated in a single day. Well, if I wanted to take all the data from just everyone here in Las Vegas who's a plant collector, my poor little computer can't handle that. But in the cloud, in Azure, it can. And because it's pay as you go, well, I only need to pay for that really crazy big storage or expensive compute for an hour versus me having to go out and buy it and then being stuck with it in my room. What's cool is you are only limited by your imagination when it comes to these AI solutions. And the future, well, that's up to you and what you want to do with it. What I have here on the screen is actually a robotic garden. Uh, this is created by an MIT student who has actually coded and taken data from the natural photosynthesis of plants and emulated that in robotic flowers. So artificial intelligence has expanded beyond just the um, emulating human capabilities. We're now emulating plant capabilities. The future is you. You are limited only by your imagination. Now, maybe plants aren't your thing. Maybe it's animals. Maybe you're looking on how to predict what the next big cryptocurrency is going to be. Azure has the ability to do that for you and work alongside you. You just need the idea. The tools are sitting there and waiting for it. So if you are interested in learning more about any of these different solutions, uh, please check out this full learning path that has all of our different artificial intelligence uh, learning opportunities. You can find that at aka.ms slash AICTA. We also have virtual training days, which are a great opportunity to hear from some of uh, my colleagues, other technical trainers, and we have a great introduction to AI and you know, it never hurts to get a fancy badge or a new certification. So if you do uh, go out and test your knowledge in one of our exams and you earn your badge, let me know on LinkedIn and I'd love to celebrate with you and follow along with you on your AI journey because there is so much we can do. And I want to thank you for joining me and open it up to any questions. So I'm going to do, I'm going to just kind of look over here in the chat and see if we have any questions. Oh, what is the website for the custom vision? All right, so the website for the custom vision, it is customvision.ai, and you'll just log in with your Azure credentials for that. And see another one here. Ooh, what is your recommendation on what to try first? Ooh, that's a hard one. So one of my first recommendations is I would go through the AI 900, the Azure Artificial Intelligence Fundamentals course. This is a really great kind of a basics course that will introduce you both to the machine learning and the cognitive services. Uh, if you have the opportunity to attend the virtual training day, it's a uh, one day session. Uh, we also offer two day, I mean a full day um, instructor led. And what it does is the first half of the day is all going through how to build out a machine learning model with both regression techniques, classification, clustering techniques. And then the afternoon or later on, you can actually go through some of the different cognitive services and it'll give you kind of a taste. 
depending on what you like, whether you're more interested in the data science route or if you're interested more in the uh, developer cognitive services route, I would check out both the DP 100 level course, which is our data science course, and then we also have our AI 102, which is going to be more aligned with the cognitive services. But hey, do both. I'm not a data scientist because I don't like math very much. So the the DP 100 class, I like it, but it really isn't something that I'm going to be using day to day. It's really the cognitive services that, especially if you're just getting started, I think it's good from a morale standpoint because you can, in a matter of minutes, build out amazing applications. What else do we have? What is my favorite plant? Uh, my favorite plant is actually a Calithia uh, musica, and I actually have that sitting right behind me. And where can I learn more? So all of these different links that we have on the screen, these are all going to be fantastic uh, reference documentation. Honestly, you just have to sit down and do the work. Uh, I know it can seem really overwhelming at first of, you know, do I go cognitive services? Do I go machine learning? I don't know. The first thing is all I would do is maybe just go and check out the fundamental learning path. The first module in there is just an introduction to what AI is. There's some really great case studies out there of what AI can do good in the world. Um, I, some of my favorite studies are they helped reunite a father with his child who was lost for several years based off of facial recognition. Um, from a supply chain management side, how it's helping retail stores fill shelves faster, healthcare, safety. I mean, there's so much it can do. And just, just dip your toe in the water and you'll find where you want to go next. Because remember, the future is now. We are already living in a world where AI can do so much. And I'm hoping, based off this session, that you're ready to take your first step. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope to maybe see you in one of my future classes and then celebrate badge certifications with you. Thank you for joining me and enjoy the rest of your night. Bye, everyone.